G'day friends and welcome back to our channel. Today's video will be all about our new 10,000 litre concrete water tanks. We'll share how the tanks were delivered and also the prep work that we carried out in advance with measuring out the location for the tanks to be placed in and how the pads for the tanks were dug out to create a nice solid foundation for them to sit on to ensure that they last the test of time. And of course, the first part of the project involved measuring and marking out the spots for the concrete tanks to be placed. To do so, we marked the center points of the concrete tanks and used a round metal bar with a string line tied to it to ensure a perfect circle. G'day guys, welcome to our channel and welcome to the mound and what we're doing today as you can already see behind me here is we're digging some circular holes it's not a complex project but it is one that takes a fair bit of time so I'll just take you real quick into what it took to dig this hole because I did this one for practice before we do the next one together so let's check out what we've achieved so far so we don't have any special tools really I mean laser level is pretty fancy but you can also do it with a spirit level and what we're essentially using is a couple of shovels and a wheelbarrow to get the dirt out of here and um, yeah we've basically gone through the layer of topsoil and we've hit clay and it's a pretty distinct soil profile here and that's essentially because this is a man-made structure and we intentionally um, put clay here and then topsoil so probably won't be as clear for a distinction if you're digging in normal ground but it's just a cool example of how soil types can work here and the main thing on the topic of clay is that generally when people put down concrete water tanks they don't worry about putting sand or gravel down because concrete's pretty strong but today we want to be really diligent because I essentially want the tanks to outlast us and what sand or crusher dust gravel does is it helps to very evenly distribute the loads underneath the water tank so when we get the next hole to the same stage as this one what we're going to do is we're going to add some sand and we're going to screed it all out and make a nice flat surface for our new water tanks and by the way what we're doing to ensure that the surface is nice and flat is we're using the laser level here and I just checked points in a bit of a triangular or a square pattern to see that generally no side of this hole is higher or lower than the other side and that's as good of a standard that we can really do in this instance before we get the sand in and all of the little bumps that you might be able to see there we're going to fill them all in with sand and then we'll be ready for the concrete water tanks to arrive which is pretty exciting it's um one of our first bits of infrastructure out here being able to store water in a tank is going to be really awesome so without further ado let's go and get the shovel and dig some more holes and even though this video will be a brief summary of everything keep in mind that this kind of shovel work does take time some people might be faster on the shovel but i spent the entire day digging these two holes and was absolutely buggered by the end of it but the cool thing about digging these holes like a basin is that we don't need any form work to keep the sand from being washed away because normally water tank pads are built on level ground and timber is used to hold the load bearing material in but over time timber rots away and needs to be replaced whereas the soil surrounding the tank in this case will essentially remain there forever all right guys welcome back we've made a bit of progress behind us here and i just want to share a really important thing that i'm being mindful of when digging these holes and it's that that hole needs to be level with this hole they basically need to be at the same height in relation to each other and the reason why that's important is because we've got two tanks going in right now and they're going to be connected together so that you have access to both of the water tanks when just pumping from one outlet and further down the line 
we're planning to have six water tanks and what we don't want is to be pumping all the way down there and needing to redistribute water with a pump or something from the tanks here so essentially we want this to be a system of six tanks and we want them all to be interconnected and the important thing with that of course is that they all need to be on the same level because if this tank's higher than this one well this one's going to overflow if they're connected and this one's going to be more empty than this one basically so we want the surface to be flat like so so the water level is all at the same height and all of the tanks can be full and it would be really nice to have access to 60,000 litres of water from one point down there or over here. We've determined that the height of this hole is 0.0 over here is the same height in relation to that hole over there so now that we've got this point established what we're going to do is we're going to copy this level all across and we're going to move from this point across there and eventually have both of these holes at the same level Generally the level's pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And now that we've compacted it, I'm just going to take the bumps off. And wherever we've got a low spot, what we'll do is we'll dump a few more shovel pools of sand. Even it all out and it's really overkill this stuff for concrete tanks, but it's going to be a nice pad. Cool. Alright, pad number two is done. Final check of the levels. Alright, see you guys when the tanks get here. After a couple of solid days of digging and carrying sand, it was now finally delivery day. After some manoeuvring around, 
The driver found a spot that he liked and the truck stabilizers were set up. The mounting points were located on the tank sides and a concrete panel lifting clutch was used to lift the tanks off the truck. It's pretty amazing how easy these operations are nowadays with modern day technology. All we had to do was hold the tank steady as it found its new spot on our mound. And the final part of this project was the tidy up. This involved filling the edges of the holes back up with dirt and smoothing out the surface. And then to stabilize the soil around the tanks, I threw down some grass seeds and then the seeds were raked in so that the birds can't steal them. And within a couple of months, the area has now greened up and the tanks look like they've been here all along. And that's all folks. This is how concrete tanks are delivered. Thanks for stopping by our channel. And in the next episode, we'll be installing the plumbing to connect these tanks together and set up a tap to have running water on demand.